Welcome back to Coding Camp. I'm Miss Blair and I will be leading you through the Coding Camp series. I want to let you know that this series builds upon each lesson. The first lesson, Talk to the Animals, was posted September 1st. It goes over the basics of Scratch and vocabulary you'll need to know. Feel free to start there and then catch up. These videos aren't going anywhere. Okay, Let's begin today's lesson. It's called Dance Hero, and I am so excited. Are you ready to code? There is so much we're going to do today. Let's get started by going to scratch.mit.edu, and then we click on Create. It's going to take us to the project space. I am so excited today. Remember, we click on Close. In this lesson, we're going to make our very own dance game, kind of like Dance Dance Revolution, but obviously a computer program. So first, we are going to delete the cat sprite because unfortunately, this sprite doesn't dance. We want to pick a sprite with multiple costumes that is a dancer. So we're going to come over here into the bottom right-hand corner over the kitty cat button that says choose a sprite, and we left Click it, and it takes us to the Sprite Library. Since I want a dancer, I'm going to click on the Dance button at the top. And then I'm going to choose 1080 Dance because he had the most dance moves. So I'm going to click on him. You can choose your own, but just know that when I'm labeling things later in the code, you're going to have to do something slightly different. So you might need to pause and regroup, but pick whichever one you want. Um, you're going to need four different dance moves. So if you go through here and the person only has like two or three dance moves, you, you're gonna need someone that has more. So I'm going to choose 1080 dance and now we're going to add some tunes. We can dance without music. I mean, you can, but it's going to be way more fun with music. So remember, we have our three tabs up at the top over here, our three panels. We're going to click on the sounds panel. So excited, so excited. So I'm going to delete this one. Shh. I, I don't want dance celebration. So coming down here, just like we chose a sprite, we're going to choose a sound. So it is the volume button down here on the bottom left hand corner and we're going to click on it and just like our sprite library this is a sound library so when you hover over the purple play buttons it'll play a clip of it okay so i want loops for this game because as it goes it's going to go for a couple of minutes so we want something that loops back around so it, it sounds like one song. So go over, pick the five songs. So you're gonna have to pick five sounds. I'm choosing hip hop. So to choose it, you just click in here and it should show up on the panel over here. So then I come back down here to choose a sound. And my next one is going to be dance energy. Oh, we have to go back up to our loops. And where's my dance energy? Over here. Yeah, I like that. So I'm gonna add another sound, loops. And I want dubstep. Where's my dubstep? Here we go. Yeah. So pick dubstep. The next one. Let's see, dance sitar. So we go back to loops. Remember, you can be picking whatever you want. So I've got my one, two, three, four. I need one more. Video game one. All the way down here. I just like that. I like old school video games. Okay, so I have my five sounds. Feel free to pause the video if you want to play. I played around with this a lot before I started creating this video, so I understand picking out sounds is really fun. So once you have your five sounds that you want, we're going to go back to the code panel, the code tab up here. 
Okay. Very good. We want to make the track that's being played to change. So we want to be able to change tracks. We're going to be changing colors in here. We're going to be changing dance costumes. We've got a lot. So buckle up. We're going to need to make a variable which will store the track number. So in order for our sounds to change, we need to create a variable that will change the track numbers. So you've got track one, two, three, four, and five. So let's go to variables. We're going to make a variable. We're going to label it track, T-R-A-C-K. And we click OK. So I'm gonna leave it up here because this is eventually going to be a game. And you don't have to once we're done if you decide that you don't want the track up here. Remember, you can always go and just unclick it. I left it for my final game because I think it adds to kind of the stats at the end. So I'm gonna leave my track up there. But that is purely up to you. So now let's do some code for this variable we just made. We go to events, the yellow button on the left hand side. We're going to drag when the flag is clicked. So remember the green flag starts a project, red stop sign stops a project. Then we choose variables and we're going to choose set my variable to a number and it goes under here. Drop down the my variable, highlight and choose track. Then we want to set our track to one. So we just click inside this little bubble, type in the number one. Control, because remember that's where all of our loops are. We're gonna do a lot of loops next week. So we're gonna play around. We've got quite a few this week. Um, as well. So control we're going to do forever. Here's our forever loop. It goes right there. And then we want it to play our sound forever. So we go to sound, which is purple, and we want play sound until done. But we want it to play the track. Oh, so it's not going to come. So see when we when we went down, these are just the different sounds that we chose from our library. We want it to say track. So we have to go to my variables and we're going to click and drag track in there. Because we don't just want it to continually play that one song. The whole point is that it changes tracks. Very good. So if we click the flag, our song should play. And it should constantly play. There you go. So you hear that pause and then it started back over. So whatever you chose should be continually playing. Very good. So let's set the stage because this is boring. We're going to choose a background. So remember our stage panel is over here from our first lesson. So if we go down to this backdrop, we're going to click on this button. And then I wanted music and then I'm choosing spotlight you can choose whatever but I'm going to make the caveat of make sure that your person when we move him in just a second or her whatever you chose that they're in the center and I like spotlight because it has a stage right here and you can see kind of where center is on your screen okay so our dude or at least my guy is way too big to fit in here so I'm going to change his size to 50. I'm going to click in the size, make sure we erase the 100, and I'm going to do 5, 0, enter. Much better, much better. So then I just plop him so it looks like he is standing on the stage. Groovy? Groovy. So change your size. You can play around with sizes. It doesn't have to be 50. You can do 25. So he's super small. If I did 125, he'd be even larger. So you can go in and you can play around. I think 50 looks good for the stage that I chose with the sprite I chose. All right, so we are going to rename our sprite just to learn how that happens since we're already playing around down here. So click in the little bubble next to sprite and I'm going to erase 1080 dance. 
and I am going to name him Start, because this is where he's starting. You can name him Bob, you can name her Susie, whatever you want, but I'm just going to call it Start today. We are going to modify the costumes. So we're going to choose our starting costume. So we go to events. Because remember, the costumes, if we go up to this panel, are all the different poses, dance poses, that we can choose. All right. This is how he started. So I'm going to go back to my code. You didn't have to click on costumes. I was just showing you what I meant. So now we're going to make him change. So when the flag is clicked, dragging this over, we want the looks. We want to switch his costume to. So this is what he's always going to start with. So when the flag is clicked, he's going to automatically go to this pose. So go to your costumes tab. I like the 1080 stance, but I might want 1080 top right, or I've got lots of costumes. I might want to always start him where he's looking down. So whatever you want, this one has a lot of costumes. I like this one. He's like, yeah, I'm going to dance. I like it. So we're going to go, I'm going to go back to my code now that I know that I like the stance. I'm going to click the down and I'm going to choose 1080 stance. So every single time we start the game over, he should be standing just like this. That's what this means. Then we go to variables. And we're going to set the track to one. So the first sound that we have in our sound library, then control, forever loop, sound, play sound until done goes inside of our forever loop, then we go to variables, we're going to drag over track. So we're basically making this, but we're adding this costume. So I want to toss this one away. So we're learning how to get rid of code. So I can either toss it over here, or if I right click, I can do delete block. Okay, but I'm just going to toss it because that's faster. I'm going to move my main code over. Okay, so what we've got is whenever we start our game, he's going to stand just like this. The track is going to play the first song, and then it's going to play the song until, well, forever. So it's not going to be done because it's in our forever loop, and we haven't told it to stop. So the only way it would stop is if we clicked the stop sign. So now we need four small scripts to make this sprite change costume when the player presses the arrow key. So what's going to happen is we're going to create another sprite in a second, and there's going to be arrows under here, just like in DDR. And so when the player presses the up key, we want his costume to change. When the player presses the right key, we want his costume to change so it looks like he's dancing. Okay? So we go to events, and we choose... When blank key pressed, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to go ahead and do four. One, two, I'm separating them, three, four. So this would be when the up key, well, let, let me go in my order. When the right arrow is pressed, when the left arrow is pressed when the down arrow is pressed and then all that's left is our up arrow so to do that all you have to do remember when you're inside one of these blocks is to click inside highlight and change it 
I'm choosing the arrows because in a second, like I said, we're going to have a sprite and it's an actual pointing arrow. So you can choose because you can see all these options. So if you like doing other things or other numbers, go for it. But just remember, you need four of them. One, two, three, four. Then we're going to go to looks. And we want switch costume to, we want four of them. So right now we're just going to click and drag that four times. Good. So obviously we need to go in here and we're going to change what they're doing as well. So I've already gone through the costumes and chosen exactly what I want him to do when the right arrow is pressed. Remember, if you want to look at the costumes, go to the costumes tab. You can write down which ones you want and then come back. And so you've got your sprite moving exactly the way you want them to dance. Whoops, I suddenly clicked it. So then we go here to the 1080 and I want 1080 top R step. And then with the left arrow, I chose 1080 top left step. For my down arrow, I chose 1080 top freeze. And for my up arrow, I chose 1080 pop left. All right, so these were my four choices. If you have chosen a different sprite, yours will not be the same. If you chose the same sprite, but you want him to boogie a little different, yours might look a little different. Um, but these are the four that I chose. So let's click the green arrow. So I'm gonna make it large so that you can see, so full screen. And I'm gonna click the green arrow. My song should be playing on a loop. And when I touch my arrow keys, he should dance. So we click stop, and I'm going to go back to my other screen. So very good. If yours wasn't moving, come back, rewind the video, and look at my code and see where our codes are different. Now that we have a dancing sprite, we can start to make the game. First, we will need an arrow sprite. So we are going to come down here and we're going to add a sprite. So this is my choose a sprite. We're going to use that same arrow that we used last week when we were drawing within the uh, game within the system. So we're going to choose arrow. In our game, the player will have five lives. So he's going to be able to mess up five times and the speed of the game will start at one and then increase. My computer will need a few variables in our program to store that data. So we are going to create some variables now and we're going to be creating a lot of code for this arrow. We go to variables, make a variable and this one is going to be lives because we want to count how many lives. We're going to count down. So I've got lives up here. Remember, if you don't want it, you can take it away. But I think it's very helpful with the game so that players know how many lives they have left. Again, up to you. And then we're going to make another variable. And it's going to be speed. S-P-E-E-D. And you click OK. Or you can click Enter. So now we've got our three variables up here. What track number we're on, how many lives we have left, and what our speed is. Okay, so now we obviously need to write some code, write some scripts, so these guys can do something for our game. We go to events, and when the flag is clicked. So we want our game to start when we click the flag. So sometimes you can start it if a certain key is pressed. Um, we're just going to click on the flag today. Variables. So when the flag is clicked, we want to set lives. So we want our lives to be at five because we are only giving our friends five chances. Then we're going to set. We want to change this to speed. 
and we want the speed to be one. So the idea is it starts off slow and we're going to build some code to make it go faster and faster and faster. Okay, first we need to set the starting position of the sprite and then hide it. So we're gonna start, we want the starting position of this to be off of our screen. Okay, so we go to motion, go to X, Y, then we want X to be negative 200, so it's the little hyphen after your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, up at the very top of your computer. <clears throat> There's a little hyphen next to that 0, that's the negative. So we want negative 200, negative 200, zero, zero. and the Y is going to be negative 125. So that is going to guarantee that this little guy starts down here and off of our screen. And we want to hide it, so we're going to go to Looks. We're going to scroll down. There's a small button down here that says Hide. And we are going to hide. All right. Next, we need to randomly change the arrow's costume and make a clone of it. So we want this to change color, and we want to make multiple of these because we don't. it would be boring if it was just one at a time, we want multiple being able to move across our screen. So we are going to add to this a control forever loop, then a looks, so the purple, switch costume to But in here, we're going to put an operator. Remember, operators do the math for us. We really like operators. We're going to do a pick random. And inside, we want it to say one, two, four. Because we only want it moving up, up, right, bottom, and left. So we're gonna pick random, one to four. Then we have a control. We have to scroll for create clone of myself, which is down here. And we want to scroll back up because we want it to wait a certain amount of time as that clone. So since we don't know, since our speed is going to be changing, right? That's one of our variables. So we need to drag our speed into here because as it speeds up, we can't say just wait one second because time is going to change within our game. So we go to variables, speed, and we pop it in that. So it should be wait, speed, seconds. So when the clone is created, we need it to become visible and then start to move across the screen. So when the clone is created, we want it to move this way. All right, so we're gonna create a new code over here, we go to control, we're going to scroll, and it says when I start as a clone. So this is code for the clones. So when I start as a clone, I want to show up, because remember, we have them hiding. So if you do something with a hide and you want your sprite, your backdrop, whatever you've chosen to hide to show up, you have to have a show eventually. So we go to looks, and we scroll down, and then we click on show, we drag it over. When I start as a clone, I'm going to show up. I'm going to forever do something. So remember that's our control loops. I'm going to forever move. So motion. We're going to move a certain number of steps. So that goes inside of our forever loop. We want it to come up with math again. So remember, math is operators. We have our green operators. And we want the, div the division one. So this is plus, minus, multiplication, and division. So we're going to drag over division, and we pop it in side of our blue block. 
and we want this to move three. We want to divide it by our speed. So remember, speed is under variables. And we drag it into the second hole, if you will, inside of the operator. So move three divided by our speed steps. All right. You with me so far? Remember, at any time, pause, rewind. That's why I love doing these as pre-recorded videos, so that you can do it at your own pace. So we need to click on the flag and make sure our arrows are moving across the screen. So go ahead and click on the flag. Oh, look at that. So you should have random arrows, because we told them to pick a random one through four. So we got to press stop. So the one to four, if we go to costumes, it is one, two, three, four. So I don't think I explained that before. But that's where we got the switch costume two, pick random one to four. That's what that is. So very good. All right. So we're going to make the arrows change color when they get underneath our stage, underneath our person. So that's how the player knows that's when they press the key. Okay, so we're going to add underneath, so we're adding on to here under the move still within the forever loop. So we're going to be underneath the move. We're going to do control, and then we want the if then. It's going to be inside that forever loop underneath our move that we just did. We're going to put in some math here. So we have operators. We want blank and blank. Drag over. Remember, it highlights that white color, and that's we know that it's safe to drop it in. Then we're going to do another operator inside this one, and it's going to be the greater than. So we want the greater than, because remember, alligators chomp in the bigger one. So we're going to drag over greater than and pop it just inside that first one. And inside here, we go to motion because motion is where it is, where your sprite is on the screen. So we're going to scroll down and choose X position. So that means where it is on the X axis. So we've got to drop because remember your x-axis is going this way on your screen and your y-axis is going vertical so since we only want our arrows to move this direction on the screen we're dealing with the x position or where we are positioned on the x-axis okay and we want it to be around negative 30 because that's it starts kind of over here because if this is zero zero negative 30 would be over here, and positive 30 would be over here, so kind of the width of our stage. So remember I said it matters to put your sprite in the middle of whatever backdrop. This is why. So if you have your sprite dancing over here and you want your arrows to light up over here, it's just some trial and error guessing the X position number. But if you want to do this along with me, put your sprite towards the middle, and then it's negative 30 and positive 30. All right, so then we're going to do the same thing over here. So we need our operators, and we need the less than, and it goes over here. And we need another X position. I'm going to scroll, 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 scroll. And this will be positive 30. Very good, very good. And so if it is between negative 30 and positive 30, we want it to change color. So if, then, it's going to change color. So remember, to change color, we go to looks. And we change color effect by 15. So I'm going to click in here. And I'm choosing 15. 
Very good, very good. All right, so let's click the flag and make sure our arrows change color. There it goes. Very cool. For a second, I thought my rainbow ran out. <laughs> there we go. So we click stop, and then they should go away. Very good. Now for the player controls, meaning when we touch the up, down, right, left arrows, we want our arrow sprite to move. We want the player to have to press the correct key on their keyboard when the arrow changes color, and their timing will have to be pretty good, because remember, we've only got this range right here, and then by then it's done flickering out, and that means you will have lost a life. First, we will create a script which detects the key being pressed, and it's going to check whether the arrow's costume is the one pointing towards the right. All right, so we're gonna make one script and then I'm gonna show you how to duplicate it. So how to make copies. So that way it doesn't take us forever and a day to make all of this code. So we're going to go to control and we have an if then loop. It's going to come down here. We have an operator. We're gonna put an operator inside our little hexagon there. And the operator is going to be the AND again. So we're going to pull over our AND. So we need sensing. So if the right arrow is pressed, okay, so we want sensing. And it's key. Mine says space right now. I think that's the default. But we remember, we only want it, we don't want to replace it. We want it right inside there going to click down and we want right arrow. So key right arrow pressed and we're going to put in another operator here. It's going to be the equal sign. So we go to the green. I'm going to drag over over the equal sign, drop it in. We want it to say costume number. Okay, because remember, we want him to change, or sorry, we want the arrow to change costumes. So we go to looks, and we go to costume number, all the way down here. We pop it in and we want it to equal one. All right, so if the right arrow is pressed, costume number equals one, then we want to delete the, co the clone because we want it to go away. That's just like in games with Dance Dance Revolution, when you get something right, it goes away. So we go to Control, and we're going to choose Delete This Clone. So we have to scroll down and we choose delete this clone and it goes inside. So this is awesome, fine and dandy. So I'm gonna show you two ways that we can duplicate, copy this code. So if you're inside the code, you're going to right click and you'll see duplicate. And we're going to put it at the bottom like so. I'm going to scroll down so that's, well, Actually, I'm going to give it a little space. So if we duplicate it one, I'll show you again. So we need to duplicate it three times, one. So now I've got one, two, three. And then the last way I'm going to show you is if you highlight it, if you're on it, and you do control C. So on your keyboard, you see the CTRL, that's the control key. So if you do control and the letter C, that's copy. And if you do control and holding down the control key, and you press the letter V, it is paste. So that's an easy way if I wanted to copy a code from one sprite and paste it in another sprite. That's a good way to do that. So, we, so you should have one, two, three, four copies of the exact same code because we have four different arrow keys, right? So we're going to leave the first one alone because we did that exactly the way we wanted it. And then we want this to say left arrow, 
So the one right underneath is going to be left arrow, and we want that to be two because that's the corresponding costume number. The next one is going to be the down arrow. And as you probably have guessed, that's three. And coming down here is the up arrow. Highlight it, and that is four. Very good. We're going to put our scripts together. Click, click, click. So we've got this huge thing, but really it didn't take us very long to make it. And we are going to add this clones script right under change color. So it's going to go in here. So we do this. Boom. So we should have delete this clone, the end of that if then, and within our forever loop. So let me scroll up and over. So that is our whole big honking thing, which is pretty awesome, huh? Remember, you could always pause and go back. I know that this class is a lot, but it's such a fun game. Okay, so we're here, but we need to make the game more difficult the longer it's played. That's what make, makes games fun. So we need a timer, and we can use the sensing buttons over here to do so. So I'm going to scroll back over, and I'm going to be putting this over here. So let's click in events. And when the flag is clicked, right, because that is how we have chosen to start our game. Sensing, so we've got a timer. So we've got the reset timer down here because every single time we start our game, we want the timer to restart. Control, we've got another forever loop. Click and drag your forever loop. Then we have another if then loop within our forever. And we are going to do another operator, another green button inside here. Here's our operators. And we want the greater than. So we're going to pop in greater than. So if the timer, so we want timer in here. If the timer is greater than, and we're going to say 15 seconds. I'll explain in just a second. So we've got sensing. We've got this little timer button. We're going to drag the timer. So if the timer is greater than 15 seconds. So I'm choosing 15 because I want my game to get faster sooner. If you do 60 in here, then your game won't speed up for 60 seconds. So once we've played around with our game, that is one way that we can make it harder, easier, depending on who you want to play your game. But I'm choosing 15 seconds. Then we go to sensing and we have reset timer. And then we're going to change our speed because we're going to reset the timer at 15 seconds because we wanted to do it every 15 seconds. And we want to change our speed. So remember, that would be a variable. So change. And remember, we need to drop down speed. And inside here, we have that negative zero period. Two. So remember that in math, it's not called a period, it's called a decimal. So 0 0.2, 0 decimal 2. And so now we're going to click our flag, and our arrow should change speed after 15 seconds. So let's see. getting faster. So very cool. If you want to pause the video and watch as they get faster and faster and faster, go for it. So let's change the music. Remember we picked five songs 
So let's change the music five times. So every 15 seconds, let's have our music change. Okay, so on the arrow sprite, we're doing a lot with the arrow today. Look at all this. Woo, you're going to have so much code to show. Mom, dad, brother, aunt, uncle, librarian, whoever. I love it. So let's go to events. The yellow tab. We want to broadcast a message. So we're going to do broadcast message one. And we're going to click the down arrow and choose new message. We're going to type in a new message. So this is like when we make a block or make a variable, this is how we make a new message. See, it brings us up to a very similar window. And we are going to type in track. T-R-A-C-K. All right. So it's going to broadcast the track. I lied. It should be change track. Just kidding. That one important word. There we go. So C-H-A-N-G-E-T-R-A-C-K. And we click OK. So now good. So broadcast change track. And we're going to put this under change speed. Here we put it under change speed. So now Click on your sprite. When I, oh, sprite. When I receive change track, so events. When I receive change track, so it's under our events tab. Then we have a variable we are going to change the track by one. And then under sound, we're going to stop all sound. Good. So this is saying that when, when we speed up, it's going to broadcast a message to our computer that's saying to change the track. And then when our sprite guy receives that message, he's going to change the track by one. And he's going to stop all other sounds. So we're now we're going to click on the flag and make sure that the music changes when the arrows speed up. So after 15 seconds, our music should change. stop this but go through and make sure that all five of yours are playing so you can pause the video but now we need a game over right because we gave them five lives but so far we haven't done anything with the lives we've changed our speed we've changed the track so now we need to change lives so if the player makes five mistakes too bad so sad charlie game is over so we want to make sure that our arrow code is highlighted so a good way to know, a good rule of thumb to know what code you are actually working on is the um, sprite that you're choosing will be highlighted. Or if you're working on stage code, that would be highlighted. But also up here in the corner, if I scroll, can you see? There's an arrow. So that's how I know which code I'm working on. Because if I chose my, my guy, there's a little guy in the corner. And if I choose my arrow, there's an arrow in the corner. Just a good thing to double check that you're coding the correct sprite. Once you get multiple sprites, it can be confusing. So on the arrow code, we are going to do a control if then. Good. So if it is touching the edge, so remember sensing is what's touching. So if it is touching instead of the mouse pointer we're going to choose edge so if our arrow touches the edge then we're going to change the lives by negative one so if an arrow gets all the way over here then that means they've lost a life so we go to variables change lives by 
We want negative one. We want them to lose a life. Then we need to restart the timer. And we want to delete the clone. So remember, deleting the clone is under control. We scroll and we delete this clone. Good. So when it's touching the edge, then we're going to change the lives by negative one, reset the timer, and delete this clone. We're going to put this script under our four duplicates, so under this big honking thing, after the large if-then block, but inside the forever loop. So we are, so we've got this forever loop. So basically, we want it to be right above that very last loop. So if I do this, that should be correct. So I'm going to pop it back out because I know that's a lot. So if you look at it, this very last loop down here with the arrow, if you put your block whoops, in between the medium and that last loop, that's where it should be. Scroll slowly so you can see all that code. There, maybe you can see a little bit more. It's just so long. Okay, go back so that my guy is bigger. Good. So our final script will tell the player that the game is over. So we're going to add to our player sprite. So we go back to him. And then we click when flag clicked. So remember that is an event. So when the flag is clicked, forever. Y'all should know that's control by now, right? We've done so many loops today. Then within our control, we have another loop. If, whoa, if then. We're gonna put an operator inside here and it's going to be the equals. The equals. And if we want our lives, so if lives equals, and we're gonna make this zero. So remember lives is a variable we made. So I'm gonna drag my lives. So if our lives equal zero, then we want our person, so we're gonna do looks to say, you lost for two seconds. So click inside where it says hello, and we're gonna type in you lost for two seconds. And then we go to control, and we want everything to stop. So we're gonna scroll, and here's a stop all. And it goes underneath our uh, say, you lost. So this means it's gonna stop the game for us. So. Until now, we've had to click the red stop sign to stop gameplay. So this means once our lives have counted down from five to zero, our sprite will say you lost and everything will stop after two seconds, but everything will stop. All right, are you ready to play your game? I'm gonna play my game. I usually don't get past track number four, fair warning. I passed this around the library after I made it, and only one librarian made it to level five. I'm sure y'all can make it to level five, but we've, we're in the large screen. So what we want to be making sure, we want to make sure our lives are counting down. We want to make sure that we are speeding up. Our track numbers are going up. Our guy is dancing. Our numbers change color and that they disappear when we get them right. There's so much we have done on this game. Are you ready? Here, I'm going to press go, and I'm going to play my game. So far, so good. I hope you're doing good with your game.
He said you lost and the game is over. So see, told you, track four. Very good, very good. And we're going to minus it. And that is your game. I'm going to leave this screen up for just a little bit longer. Remember, you can always go back and look at the code. You can change the number of lives. What if you wanted to make it go faster and faster and faster, so you want to give them 20 lives because you want your game to go longer. You can add in more sounds, right? So you could add in more track numbers. You can change your timer. So instead of every 15 seconds, remember, if you change your timer, then you can play the game for longer. So it's totally up to you. You can have your guy at the end say game over instead of you lost. Up to you. But that one was a lot. I, I had a lot of fun playing this one. I personally like Dance Dance Revolution, so I think that's why. Oh, we learned so many new things. And look at all that code, you guys. This is the most coding we've done so far. So you made it through the whole class today. That's awesome. You are a code superstar. We will be back next week with another video. So make sure you tune in. And thank you guys very much.